Shrines of Depths. Are these fancy gazebo-like structures spread throughout the various regions of the game house the most valuable treasure chests? 40 Primo Gems and a slew of other goodies make them a must-have for all, especially free-to-play players. Although, getting a key for one tends to involve a lot of work, be it quests, collecting and offering oculi to the Statues of the Seven, or other various tasks. Some are even locked behind one-time domains that, themselves, are locked behind a certain adventure rank. But, what if we didn't have to deal with any of that? What if we could just stroll on in and take the treasure? Okay, so it's never that easy, is it? Let's get to cracking the safe. A quick look at these things might make one think this may not be much of a task, but those flimsy looking walls and thin barriers are no joke. If we're going to get inside one of these things, we first need to dig a tunnel, or at least go to the emptiness that is the outside of the map. Oh yes, that is indeed the shrine's very own separate chunk of rock plastered to the bottom. These things are guarded on all sides by something, and it's that something that is our alternate key. After checking quite a few shrines, I learned that not all are guarded from beneath by a second layer of rock. And it was while exploring beneath Watatsumi Island that I noticed the shrine there is instead guarded by a layer of water. This, I concluded, was going to be the one. And the operation entered the planning phase. It would be a relatively simple plan of action. Step 1. Get outside the map and get over there. Easy enough, given I'd already taken to exploring beneath Watatsumi Island. By the way, the Hydro Hypostasis looks really cool from below. It's another example of a boss arena changing the skybox. Step 2. Check the height of the water plane. Water pulls onto the surface when beneath, but the collision for this happening feels like it isn't uniform across all instances of water, meaning in some places, one can get exceptionally close to the surface without issue. This happens to be one of those places with the water collision being among the smallest. This is good, since it'll allow us to climb rather high without a problem. Step 3. Question mark, question mark, question mark. For real, because, well, there were some things to try. Step 4, however, would definitely be profit. 40 Primo Gems and a slew of other goodies, to be exact. Probably. We start with the simplest of options. Just jump over into it. No dice. Pull to the surface by the water. Using Xiao's skill doesn't change the outcome much, but it does get us closer. Alright, so what if we climb in? This conveniently placed rock formation is exactly what we need to do that, but the water will pull us to the surface because it's too high up, right? This is a good time to explain how water works. Normally, yes, we'll be pulled to the surface. We've already seen this happen. However, water cannot pull one to the surface if there is an object overhead. This rock formation just happens to have a ceiling, literally giving us the perfect cover. Only problem now is that it doesn't quite reach the shrine. We're just under the stairs, maybe if we- nope, the stairs don't count as an object. What if we combine climbing and Xiao's skill? We're much closer this time, so oh, just outside the barrier. If we make our way up the wall on the other side, there are these stones. They're not exactly a solid structure, but there may be enough of them to count as a ceiling. Or not. Kazuha could probably manage this by dropping below the water's height, gliding the short distance, and then boosting himself back up into the water's collision, which would theoretically pull him into the shrine. Except, I don't have Kazuha. But I do have the rest of the usual team. Time for Kuching and the Traveler to shine. The plan had entered its final act, which begins with this narrow ledge. With Starfell's sword creating a platform beneath the rock formation, Kuching has just enough space to climb atop it. Using what I'd learned from Palace in a Pool while exploring beneath Watatsumi Island regarding how Kuching's skill behaves when near the surface of water, the marker is thrown and Kuching is whisked into the shrine. Er, wait a minute, this doesn't seem right. We have this first person point of view and Kuching is being pushed away. And we're tossed out. But if at first you don't succeed, once in, I immediately placed a portable waypoint, and then was promptly forced to the wall despite the pause screen being open. This thing really does not like visitors. Seriously, the interior of one when unopened is a mass of invisible walls constantly pushing your character away. Look at this. Kuching gets suspended in the air when she jumps and holy cow what the heck just happened. I'm beginning to think I'm not very welcome here. But being this close to the finish line meant the plan simply needed one final push. 
And what better way to do that than literally with a push? After all, surely Kuching's teleport can carry us to the chest. Okay, how about Xiao's dash skill? No luck either. Kaya's ice? Alright, that one's a bit of a stretch, but the hope was for some weird interaction with the water that's just below. Well, we're here and the waypoint is there, let's try using it. Teleporting doesn't change much, for when we load in, our character is already pressed to the wall. Things were looking pretty grim. Nobody could get near the chest. It's almost as if they were all just too big to move around in here. If only there were some small character who excels at navigating tight spaces, one who could teleport in unaffected by the forces at work here. Someone like Klee, who naturally and of course, is once again coming in clutch at the final stretch. And thus, the moment of truth. The chest cannot be opened. That's right, we're here, able to touch the treasure chest, but no option to open it shows up. The one on screen is still the prompt for using the key to open the shrine. Which begs the question, if the chest's open prompt is locked behind the shrine key, why in the world did they bother making the interior of these so impenetrable? These are easily the most secure locations in the game. Well, it is what it is. I did say once before that the inconsistency of design in this game is one of the most exciting things about exploration in it, and that goes for experimentation all the same. Also, unaffected by the forces at work here maybe isn't the best observation. Some crazy stuff is happening to the Spark Knight. So yeah, Shrines of Depths. With immense difficulty, some can be broken into, but the chest within cannot be looted. Anyways. Whoa, wait. That looks really, really cool. Why can't this be Klee's plunging animation? And <laughs> while they're at it, they can make her say kick! every time she uses it. Thanks for tagging along on this experiment. This had been something I've slowly worked towards ever since I first started exploring Out of Bounds, but I never really dedicated a full play session towards attempting it until this comment from Anom reignited the will to try. Though it ended without reward, finally confirming whether a Shrine of Depth can be looted without a key is enough. If you enjoyed the video, why not check out the others in the channel? Sprinkled among the many Out of Bounds explorations are experiments like this, such as pushing child into the void, testing if the game's overworld has a ceiling, and completing Dunya Ruins without ever draining the water. And if the content really strikes your fancy, a like and subscribe helps tons. This is Musashi, signing off. Till next time! Show me a moves!